Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are finally on to module five, which is about smart marketing. And this is one I'm particularly excited about because many of you have been on the money train for a long time. And many of you have also told me that you have to sometimes go through these things three, four, five times before you go, oh, okay, there's a piece that I didn't see before and now I see it. And as we all know, when it comes to marketing and when it comes to the money train, you are talking cash flow. And I think many of us, are at this point now of the year where we are really focusing on cash flow, but we're also focusing on cash flow for December and cash flow for January. So this is quite the model. Um, it is about the money train. For some of you, the concept of the money train is going to be uh, new. For some of you, it's going to be foreign, but um, I'm very excited to jump into this with you. So Let's just see what we're going to cover today. We're going to we're going to really do an introduction to smart marketing, and it's called smart marketing because it's a different way of doing marketing. It's a type of marketing that uh, potentially can take longer, but it's also the type of marketing technique that makes people stay around longer as well. So the idea here is to put more effort in the beginning, but then have better retention rates later. Um, which is always great, you know? So also the better you run the money train, the less demanding your clients. So, but we'll get into all of that later. Today, we're just going to give you a broad overview of the money train, which is a systemized, uh, systemized approach to marketing that's increasing the profits of business owners worldwide. We're going to gain you insight into why many entrepreneurs fall in, uh, fail in their marketing efforts and understand why online marketing is not always sustainable for those who desire a freedom business. So we're going to cover a lot of these things today and um, let's get going. So what is the money train? Some of you knows the money train. Some of you don't know the money train. The money train really is a, a system that we've invented in order to get people that you want. And I think this is really, really important into your environment and onto a journey. It's that simple. I think you know, many of the marketing gurus out there and many of the marketing methodologies has overcomplicated this process so much that people are confused, you know, and then in on top of that, you throw in all the software and all the, the you know, techniques and all this stuff. Whereas this system, this marketing system can be used anywhere in your business. It can be used online. It can be used offline. It can be used in order to promote a new product and service. It can be used to launch your blueprint to the market. It can be used to open up a new market. It can be used to build a new community. It can be used for something as simple as getting more sales. Um, many people wonder, do we have a money train for our business, just one? And the answer is no. You would have a money train per target market. So I'm not even going to say per product or per service. We've got a money train per target market. So if you've got a target market of, let's say, SMEs, and you've got a product for them, and you've got a target market of corporates, and you've got a product for them or a service, and you've got a target market of a community that you're trying to build, you've got three different money trains. So let's just make that clear so that you know right in the beginning where we're heading with that. This money train has been tried and tested over and over again. There's a lot of people in your circle of excellence that made a lot of money and is still making a lot of money with the money train. The real secret here is consistency. So the money train consists of five carriages. And during the course of module five, we're going to go super in detail into these carriages. So I'm giving you an overview today. If you get off this call after the day and you go, right, you know, now I've got the five carriages. What do I do with that? I've got some sort of idea. I can start playing around with it. That's cool. But the entire module is going to be dedicated to this. We're going to really, really dive deep. Um, but for the time being, all you have to know is that there's a lead carriage, there's a trust carriage, there's a love carriage, there's a sales carriage, and there's a journey carriage. And your mission is going to be to get people that you want, people that you've profiled as an ideal buyer, as many of them as possible in the lead carriage and then take them on a journey. When I say as many as possible, I'm really talking about driving high activity here. So if you're sitting here and you're getting discouraged over high activity, especially when it comes to the lead carriage, I want to really, really encourage you to start looking at 
who in your business or who as an outsourced agent or which virtual assistant uh, can drive traffic into your lead carriage. A big part of the success of the money train is activity and is numbers. For example, when we have a mastermind, we need at least 800 invites in order to get 10 people into our masterminds. That's quite substantial, but it doesn't have to be this daunting because you don't have to do it yourself. So from day one, as we go through the money train, I want you to have the mindset of, can I outsource the lead carriage? Can I outsource the trust carriage? Can I outsource the love carriage? Can I outsource the sales carriage? Can I outsource the journey carriage? In our experience, one of the first carriages you can outsource is the lead carriage. And one of the last carriages you probably want to outsource would be the trust carriage and even the love carriage. But we'll get to that later. Another principle of the money train that I want you to know about is that even though we've built the money train in an infographic that goes from top to bottom, this is actually a circular solution. It's not linear. So it's not like you get people into the lead carriage and then the journey ends when they get to the journey carriage. This is a circular process. So if you want to put a KPI or a powerful measurement in place to see if your money train is working, return business would definitely be one of those measurements because the better your money train, the higher quality, the lead carriage, and the least people that falls off along the way, the better the chance that once you have a person on the journey with you, once you have the client on the train with you and you sold them something, there's a very good chance that they will either come back to the lead carriage again, buying something different or renewing their subscription or referring someone to your business. So this is a circular model. It's not a linear model. So what's the pitfalls that we've seen in modern day marketing relating into the money train? Poor leads entering the system, you know? This is mainly because many of us sitting on this call has had a job before. Uh, we've been corporate and then we leave corporate and then we become some sort of expert we become a coach or a consultant or whatever, and we freak out, right? We think we need to make money, our families on our case, whatever. What happens is then we take on any lead. We go, bring it on, baby. I'll come with any solution that you need. I'll go and develop any, you know, uh, proposal, whatever, as long as you're happy and as long as you pay me. What happens in this is that we really lose the plot when it comes to proper profiling of our target market and we end up some to be an entrepreneur that's just sort of fishing in the big bad ocean. We pull out all these fish, we get sharks in, we get tuna fish in, we get sardines in, and we serve all of them. As opposed to going, look, I'm going to be an octopus person. And let's say the black face here that you see um, is an octopus. Then uh, you only take in black faces. You only take in octopuses. You don't take in yellow faces. You don't take in, um, uh, you know, cream faces or green faces or red faces, you focus on the black faces. And that means if someone refers someone to you in their red face, you've got a plan in order to do something with that red face. Well, maybe you've got a different money train for the red face. Maybe you're getting so many red faces in, but you don't want to work with them. So you've got a program for those red faces. You personally only want to work with the black faces. So you develop a money train that only focus on those black faces or those octopuses if that's the way you've profiled them to be. So ask yourself as a number one today, and even if you can come up with this, who do I want to attract to a specific money train? Take a piece of paper or doodle about it and draw out this money train. Say, I am targeting a corporate, so that needs a money train. I do get these business that is SME. Do I need another money train for them? Or am I going to uh, pass this on to someone else? Maybe I've got a sister company or affiliate agreement. What am I going to do with those people? And then, oh my goodness, I now notice that I'm building a, um, a community as well. And maybe this community is for men or for women. And that doesn't really work with my corporate because I don't want to be men or women in my corporate product. So I probably need a different money train. I don't want you to think about products or services at the moment. I want you to think about the profile of the client and give every profile that you potentially work with one money train. In our experience, the companies and the clients that we, we work with that has one strong profile with various money trains for that one profile does the best. 
What gets very, gets very confusing is if you have this profile and this profile and this profile, it doesn't mean it can't be addressed. I mean, you can have a website that when people come to that website, it splits them into the profile that suit them the best. And that works as well. But ultimately, the more focused you're going to be in your approach, the better. We get uh, another pitfall in the money train is disconnected train carriages. So you get a lead carriage and then people go, okay, I've got my leads. And then they jump from lead carriage to the sales carriage. Or they jump from the lead carriage to the love carriage. They go, oh, lead and love carriage is the same. Oh, they go, lead, trust and love is the same. I don't need to do two steps there. So I'm going to jump. I'm going to go lead carriage, love carriage, sales carriage. You'll have a substantially lower conversion rate if you do that. Remember, the money train is really a sales funnel. It's actually a marketing and sales funnel. And the success that we've experienced and um, many of our clients around the world is to meticulously, I almost want to say religious, religiously, keep within the carriages and track and measure conversion in each one of the carriages. So don't disconnect these carriages. Don't go lead sales or lead love sales or lead sales um, journey and, and skip, skip the middle part. You want to be active in all five carriages and you want to be measuring all five carriages as well. So you can see I've clearly distinguished there between the five carriages, and I want you to do that as well. Now, the other pitfall, and this is a third one, and I have to say there's many pitfalls. Um, I like to talk about the pitfalls because people go, they look at the money train and they hop, skip and jump away and they go, it's going to work overnight. No, it's something that you have to build. This is a system that you have to build. Um, but if you get the system right and you track and measure the system, you are starting to scale, right? If you actually focus on building the system, measuring the system, and you ultimately start outsourcing the different carriages, which now gives you a focused approach to sales, you're not just outsourcing sales, you have five elements that's broken down. Uh, you have the potential to really build something super scalable here. Yeah? Uh, that's where I get excited. I get excited when people you know, go, I've done this over and over again, Lundy. I'm running the system. I'm running the system. I'm running the system. It's working a little bit. A month goes by. It's working a little bit. Two months go by. It's working a little bit. Three months go by. Boom. Month six, cash flow. What happens at that point? Delivery becomes your biggest problem. And I'll be honest with you, that, that becomes the biggest problem. If your money train runs well and it's a well-oiled machine, and I see Andrea has been through the ropes here, uh, if you run this well, delivery is going to be your, your journey carriage. Taking people on a journey is going to be your biggest problem. And in order to prevent it, I want to encourage you to, from the beginning, see again what you can disconnect from. Interestingly enough, we find lead is one lead carriage. It's one of the biggest and easiest carriages to disconnect from if you want to scale your business. The other one, surprise, surprise, is the journey carriage. Delivering to your clients is the other big one you can quickly disconnect from. What's really important there, there is just that in the beginning of the sales process, when you get your leads in, that you already make it clear to them that this is an experience or a journey that's not always going to involve you. If you do that very well, then people get it. So, But the third pitfall with the money train is people do not automate this system. They don't go, how can I get this automated? They don't go, how can I get myself out of it? They don't go, how can I hang it, hand it over to another person? So a very practical way to do this is to, whenever you're busy with the lead carriage, to stop yourself and say, is there potentially someone else who can do it? I've profiled this client uh, very well. Um, I have a very good idea of what they should be. I know where they hang out. Can I give it over to a smart person who's going to able to repeat this process for me, right? When you're working on the trust carriage, you have to ask yourself, at this space where I'm busy creating trust, can someone else do it for me? Can another person do it for me? Uh, no, not yet. Pass. Love. Can someone do it for me? Sales. Can someone do this pitch on my behalf? Probably. Journey. Can someone deliver on my behalf? But behalf probably. And so on and so on. That's how you, you start the process of automation. The process of automation starts with a raised awareness. What is raised awareness? It's the ability to catch yourself out while you're doing stuff. It's that simple. It's going bloop, 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 on my computer and going, wait, why am I doing this? Who else can do this? This is not about arrogance. This is not about you are now too good to do this. This is about being efficient in your business and scale 
so that the business can live without you, so that other people can get the health that you've developed without you. This is what it's about, right? Um, and so automation is your keyword there. So let's quickly have a look at these five carriages. We have the lead carriage. The lead carriage is about bringing the right profile people in your business. You're going to struggle getting those right profile people into your business if you've not defined them well. If you don't know exactly what their behavior is, here comes the difficult one. If you've not chatted to them, I like people to at least chat to 100 people in their target market, ask them questions. You can use focus groups for them. And here's another one. Leads in your lead carriage is going to be a struggle if you've not positioned yourself properly. You know, if you're trying to attract a certain profile person and they're looking at your digital footprint online and they're looking at your LinkedIn and your, your website and that's not developed for them, they're going to go, uh, you know, what's going on here? I don't really get it. It doesn't feel like, someone speaking to me. So there's already a huge effort that you can make before we go through this entire module five is to say, who am I trying to reach? And if I'm trying to reach that specifically, the specific profile person, what does the beehive or the ecosystem look like in order for them to arrive there and go, wow, I like this spot. It feels like my spot. Um, for example, you know, you may be someone who's into uh, weight loss and you've created this whole ecosystem for weight loss, but uh, you sort of left out that you're helping uh, females who just had their first baby with weight loss. Now, a female who just had their first baby is going to feel much different in an ecosystem that's for females who had their first baby than, for example, a woman who's on her third baby or adopts. So, so you have to be super, super specific. She must arrive in that uh, positioning ecosystem and go, wow, uh, you know, this person is talking to me. I feel safe here. So the more you can nail it, the more specific you can make who you're talking to, the better your money train will run. From the lead carriage, once you have the person in, your job, your mission is to get them to trust you. It's that simple. Not a lot of people who can do that. Uh, it's a super skill, right? Uh, a lot of people uh, use software to get other people to trust them. It's a tough one and, and we'll get there. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but it's a tough one, right? In our experience, creating trust in person is probably the most powerful one, but you can do it online. But we'll, we'll delve in detail uh, into this during this course of Module 5. Then once you've got their trust, uh, you have to get them in, into love. Now, if you track and measure your money train, you'll notice that as people come in through the lead carriage, some of them falls off. They jump off the train, right? You've not been able to, to create trust with them in the trust carriage, so they fall off. Um, then other people, you know, you've been able to create trust with them, but they don't feel the love. They're going to fall off. Um, some people feel the love, but they don't want to open their, their purse, you know? Um, and so they're not going to go into the sale. They're not going to convert into a sale. And then some... Uh, may convert into a sale, but somehow don't stick around uh, for the journey. So you have to measure it. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Um, so you really want to know what's going on from day one. A lot of people start the money train with 100 people. Um, that's a good number. I like it when people start their money train with 500 people. And um, But then just as they get some success, they forget that as some people jump off the trust carriage and love carriage and sales carriage and journey carriage, that lead carriage has to be constantly bringing in new people. So you can't go, right, here's my 500. I'm going to take them on a journey, measure it and see what happens. It's a good start, but uh, it's not good enough. You're going to have to constantly feed that lead carriage. That lead carriage has a mouth that's open like that. That's why they draw the funnels starting like this. And then it becomes narrow, narrow, narrow because you're working here with a vetting process. But that mouth is open and you have to feed that thing. The more you feed that mouth, the more you're feeding your bank account. It's literally directly correlated. So the more numbers go in there, um, the more you'll see zeros in your bank account. But ironically, you'll learn with the money train that it has all to do with numbers, but it has all to do with the personalization and customization that you provide throughout this process as well. Right, so... These are five carriages, and again, we'll go through immense detail uh, in all of those five carriages over the next few weeks. 
I didn't want to do module five just by giving you an overview. The overview is meant to open you like a flower. The overview is meant to plant some seeds and make you think, uh, but we, we're going to have lots of fun with this module, really diving deep and thinking of ideas of how we can make our money trains amazing. So online versus offline. Um, you know, me and Mike still love uh, online, I love offline a lot. That's why we travel, right? It's just, it's different. Uh, those of you who's been to a mastermind with us have experienced, you know, being in a room, giving hugs and kisses, you know, and uh, saying hello and being excited to see each other, coming to a Bali business school, coming to an event, seeing your buddies, you know, high-fiving each other. It's it's nothing beats it, honestly. You can, rep you can replicate it online, but you can have more touch points. So, Let's say with a money train offline, you can potentially have, let's say in the trust carriage, you can have three or two touch points to get a person to love you or to trust you. You can, for example, have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine touch points online. Now, these stats are not based on real stats. I've thumb sucked it, right? It's just to give you an idea. It can happen that you try and create trust offline and you do it with, for example, seeing a person at a networking event, next time you take them for a coffee, third time, maybe you create trust by doing an assessment for them and quickly they start converting. They go down the money train, turns into love, turns into a sales conversion. Whereas online, there may be a lot of things. There may be emails, there may be testimonials, there may be, um, you know, um, uh, you know, constant blogging. Um, you, you know, you, you get this typically with the type of YouTube thing. A lot of videos and content needs to go out there before the people trust you. And um, this is the type of thing you want to avoid. Ultimately, my personal view is you want to have a combination of both. If some of you are sitting here and you have a really, really high premium product uh, for, 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 for high level clients, the offline strategy in our experience works very well. And I'm only talking the offline part for creating trust. You don't necessarily have to do the offline touch points for lead and for, for love and for sales and for delivery, um, but the trust part offline uh, is for us the most effective. Um, and then again, you can do that online. You can create trust online, but you're probably going to have more touch points uh, than what you have off, off, um, offline. So if you have a very high price product, you probably want to lean in your business a little bit more offline. If you've got a more budget type of product, you can do very well online. And also that one would be better for you if you're looking at a scaling strategy for your business. So just keep those things in mind. Now, there's many, many success stories um, all over the world um, with the money train. Many, many people in our circle of excellence has made more money with the money train. It seems obvious, but you know, if you're going to print the money train out and you're going to put it above your computer or you can have a board where you start tracking and measure it, you will make money. And the money train will also very quickly show you where you fall short. It will show you if your delivery is a problem. You know, if you if you measure your delivery to clients and there's a 20% return rate, there's your problem. You need to give them a better experience, right? If you're in the money train and you're not getting enough leads in, um, then you need to drive higher activity. If you're in the money train and you have this incredible ability to create trust with people, um, but you don't have a ability to create love with them, then it means that you're really good to strangers at first contact. You, your first impressions is great, but your ability to create a lasting relationship is not good. You see how this money train will bring you intelligence. And so if you look at this today and you have a target market that you, you, you've, you spotted, an ideal buyer, a person, and you give them a name, that person's name is, let's say, Andrea, and uh, you have your Andrea and you've positioned yourself online and offline for Andrea. You go, Andrea. You've got your Andrea as a target market. You're going to build a money train for Andrea. If you put that up and you drive Andrea's into that lead carriage and start measuring it, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. But you can't drop the ball. You can't split your train up. You can't go, this week I'm going to focus on lead Next week, I'm going to focus on trust. The train has to run. So in one week, there has to be attention on the lead carriage, on the trust carriage, on the love carriage, on the sales carriage, as well as on the journey carriage. When people come to us and say, oh, you know, I'm not making money. 
Um, I've tried the money train and I usually say to them, how many times have you tried the money train once or twice? That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Um, and if you open your book and there's no conceited effort in your diary for bringing leads in, or if you get to Friday and you see there was no sales pitches, or you see there's no clients that booking calls with you or new clients and you're delivering to them, then those are all insights that your money train is not working. The money train work for people in our ecosystem who want to make more money. The money train works for people who want to build their brand online. The money train works for anyone who wants to book, a, 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 you know, launch a book. The money train works in all those areas. You just need to go and plot it out. It's a fun thing to do. It's what I call strategy, right? Many people think strategy is an old word. Strategy is as alive and well as ever. You really just need a big piece of paper or, um, you know, a whiteboard or a doodle, whatever your thing is. And go and say, okay, here's my business. Let's plot it. What do I have? I have uh, Andrea, who's a corporate client that I want to target. Here's a money train for her. I have a community that I want to build. Here's a money train for that. Um, I have a book that I want to launch. Here's the money train for that. And you start to track and measure these things. If you're good with software, it will help you a lot. If you have software that can help you with this, it will help a lot. But initially, if it overwhelms you, just get an Excel sheet per money train. And that's literally what you do. You start your day by looking at the, the Excel sheet, the money train for a specific target audience. And then at the end of the day, you look at that Excel sheet again. And that way you're going to get yourself into the mode of actually running these money trains. So that's a mouthful. And I want us to have a bit of a discussion around it. Um, but before we do that, I just want to give you some recommended activities. I like to do that because it helps to keep us on track because you listen to all this and you go, okay, exactly what do I need to do now? If you can stick with these recommended activities at the end of these calls, then it will be easier for you to track yourself. And one of the simplest thing you can do is to get a flip chart with highlighters and draw the five carriages of the money train. Start by drawing it out, right? Have your money train in front of you. Go, this is the steps required to lure people into my business like a moth to a flame, right? And it sounds incredibly manipulative. It, it, it doesn't have to be. Sales and your money train becomes a wonderful experience if you've targeted the right people. You're targeting the wrong people. If you're trying to help everyone, it becomes a very frustrating experience because you actually have multiple money trains and you don't realize that. So draw out your money train on a flip chart or a piece of paper. Refer back to your flip chart drawing and make notes next to each of the carriages as you progress throughout the module. So that will really help you to have that initial five carriages drawn out. And as I continue uh, with smart marketing in this series, you just keep on adding stuff to your flip chart. You go, oh, okay, this is not something I realized on the lead carriage, I'm gonna put that there. Oh, okay, Lundy said something on the module about the love carriage today I hadn't thought about before. So see on your flip chart or on your paper that you put on your wall or your whiteboard or whatever, see how this, comes to life. That's why today you just draw the money train. You draw the money train there at the top in front of the lead carriage. You put your ideal target market. That's all you have to do for now. And then as we go together through this journey, you're going to see this money train of yours become more specific, more better, ultimately bloom. How do you know we actually have a very good idea of the money train? Well, the obvious one is you've completed the lesson online and you may look at this and go, Lundy, are you kidding me? But, you know, if you go to school, you have to go through the curriculum first. They give you a curriculum, they give you book books to study. And once you've studied the books, uh, you get an exam. And only once you've done that, you go and get a job and go into real life. It's no different in entrepreneurship. It's a bit boring, I know. But if you've not been through the module for, if you're a circle of excellence, you, you want to go through the module that relates to money training that will set you up for success. Or if you're working on the octopus program, which is the one that I'm taking you through now, and you want to get a few steps ahead and go through that program uh, online, that will incredibly help. That will help you a lot. Because then when I'm talking about these concepts, you're not only taking in the concepts for the first time, but you've already developed good questions around it because it's not the first time you hear it. The second uh, evidence of accomplishment is a clearly drawn money train on a flip chart in a sketchbook or an iPad. That's all from this last lesson we ask you to do. 
obviously the recommended activities and evidence of accomplishment will become more specific, more measurement specific as we go to the module. But today was only an opening. Today is only the opening of a concept. You getting familiar with the idea of money train, you getting familiar with the idea of a sales funnel, drawing it out on something where you can see it and we only planting seeds. And over the course of module five, we'll water those seeds and we'll give it water and sun and we'll grow those seeds together. So that's all from my part. Um, on our next module, we're now going to dive deep into the lead carriage, um, step one, and um, sort of dissect that li a little bit. But for the time being, uh, we have enough time left for you to uh, give me your thoughts, your ideas uh, on the money train, any statement, anything that's worked for you so far. I would love to hear what you have to say. Looking cool, Bert. Looking super fly. Lundy, I've, thank you. I've, I've, I've got a, um, I've, I feel like I have to speak. I've got a question. Thank you. That was lovely. That was really good. Um, something that, that I've just really um, realized this morning very clearly is, is that, um, you know, which is something that we're also discussing, but the, the two very different sort of markets. And I, I, th I think at the moment, people are very confused in terms of you know, I've got these very separate funnels, uh, the, you know, the, the, the scientific group and then the, the vets. And um, I, I'm really, I'm just realizing how important it is to be super clear as to my positioning and that, that, that people are clear as to what I represent and what I'll be offering them. But what I'm really struggling to just figure out is like on LinkedIn, I've got these two things at the moment, the well-being and the scientific things. And I'm sort of posting on both and I'm not sure how to separate those into, into different entities. And the one thing I'm thinking is maybe to take the well-being rather to, to, to a different social media platform like the like Instagram and, and just do the, the LinkedIn for the scientific side. I, I don't know. It's just my, my thoughts. So, but, but I've, just, it's, I've become a lot more clear about it from your presentation. The importance That's of great, it. Bert. That's great. Thank you for that feedback. You know, there's different things you can do. Uh, and before I say what you can do, I'm going to start with this. You know, if you in this society can create the ability to get other people to trust you, you're a freaking rock star. Let me tell you that. It's it's one of, I'm not just talking about your clients. I'm talking about your partner, your kids, your everything. If you, if people come to you and they're willing to sit under your wing and they go, gosh, I know even if I screw up, you're going to have me under your wing, right? And you, you have my back and you've got my best interest at heart. If people believe that in their hearts, you're, uh, you're a freaking god goddess. Let me tell you that. The second thing is clarity. If you can get people to come and sit here under your wing and know exactly who you're talking to, who you're addressing, and what you're going to do for them, you are like freaking Medusa, right? You, you, you're up there. You, you really. So that brings you to your dilemma, Bert. You know, there's two things I counsel people on in these cases. One, you have two different businesses. That that's one thing that you know it's a tough thing for people to to uh, admit is that look. I've got two different domains. I got a business that focus on scientists and actually helping them comply and treat animals better. And then I've got a well-being business for vets. And I can get these two sister companies to eventually do stuff together if I want to. But I've got two different businesses. That means, yeah. you know, one business is run by birds. The other business is run by a bull. I call them bulls. You get a you get a person a bull to run your science business. You oversee it. And you, they use their LinkedIn profile and Instagram, whatever, for that business. Yeah. And you use your Instagram profile and LinkedIn profile for that business. That's option number one. And there's many options. I'm just giving you an idea. I'm giving you food for thought. The other options is to realize that many times what can happen is that the first one is just the attraction strategy. But once they enter your ecosystem, there's more options for them. So I'm going to give you an example. Many people that I work with um, love to counsel people on the spiritual side um, of yeah. business. But people see the spiritual side of business and they, they run a mile. They go, oh, these people are, woo -woo, you know, and I don't want to work with them, blah, blah, blah. So then they sort of attract only business people. But they're already very aware that these people have a spiritual side, but I don't bring it up in the beginning. Once they get to the journey carriage, they send them to one, two, or three alternative areas if the profile fits. So 
I'll give you an example of that in our ecosystem. We get into our ecosystem conscious leaders. That's the umbrella brand, right? Our conscious leaders are people who usually are a coach or a consultant or a speaker or author or a trainer or a CEO. They come down that money train with one thing and one thing in mind. They come to work, for example, directly with me and Mike and Diane, right? Here they come bloop, 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 through the money train. We get them into a mastermind. That's our trust strategy. We get them on a one-on-one -on -one call. That is the love strategy. They go into a sale. I mean, many of you on this call have been through that actual money train process. This is actually a money train. So they go through that as a sale. They go on a journey. Now we start to bet you. Now we go, oh, Oh, how interesting. How interesting that, um, Andrea, you the, you the one today that the name's getting mentioned, right? How interesting that Andrea liked to travel. Maybe we should pass Andrea over to the soul journey carriage because maybe she would not just want to work with us one-on-one. -on -one. She has the profile of a traveler. So let's send her to the soul journey lead carriage and see if she doesn't want to go on a soul journey with us to America. You see what I'm saying? So now we've sent her there. Now another person comes through uh, the conscious leadership one and we go, oh, that's interesting. And um, Angela is an avid reader. Maybe we should send her to the, the, the um, money train that sells our books because she may find one of those books interesting. And so on and on. So on. now it's all the funnel that is sort of is sitting under the umbrella brand but it's like a tree, right? It's like the top of the tree. It sits under an umbrella brand. And as the bar comes down, it opens up again at the bottom. It's almost like Car and Buerta's logo here, right? It opens at the top of the funnel. Uh, you squeeze them through a betting process. But when they get to the bottom of the root system, there is various options. This only works if your target audiences all can fit under an umbrella brand. Mm. So for example, in your case, Bert, does your vets and your scientists all have a love for animals or not? If they all have that in mind, you have to, if they're different, different crowds, you've got two different businesses here. Different things. Thank you. Helpful. You're welcome, Bert. Any more questions or statements? Anything that can help our group here? I'm actually very good at staring at people. Landy. Let me Andrea. fill the gap. Let me fill the gap. Thank you. Um, one of the things I want to ask you about, uh, and it's, I know this is something that um, you and Diane and uh, Mike talk a lot about, and that is our blueprints. Yeah. Do you find that by developing out the blueprint also helps to identify the money trains? Like they work kind of hand in hand very good question thank you andrea so i like to develop a blueprint usually for the business before i develop a blueprint for the products and services uh, simply because the blueprint sort of it basically widens your peripheral view in terms of the value proposition you provide before you jump into the products and services so what i find in our ecosystem when you have a very well developed blueprint um, that blueprint does not only help you with your value proposition and getting your mind around why did you, you know, why are you doing what you do? The blueprint really helps with that. The blueprint also shows your narrative and your personal story and, and your unique selling point. The blueprint also is designed in a way to attract that specific target audience. Once we have the main blueprint for the business, it's much easier to break that down. So um, the way I like to put it is we work on the chicken first before we work on her eggs. So, um, and, and it, it's just perspective, you know, it may happen that you develop this blueprint for your business and sort of keep that aside. And that's not actually the one you promote, but that's for you to get onto the page of what am I doing here? What's my value proposition? And then once that blueprint is developed, developing those eggs, which you then put in the front of each of your money trains is incredibly easy. It happens like that. Who else? Who else have a question? Who else is wondering about something? Are you all clear? No, I have a question. Moira, bring it on. I mean, you are the inspiration for the money train, so I was hoping you would ask something. <laughs> um, I, I have a question. 
because so I've done everything back to front. That's why um, I have to go around again and do it properly this time. But so I've had, so I'm really good at the trust. I'm not very good at the whatever first carriages. Um, mm. But actually, I'm getting more strategy around that. So I've got a few people who are my ideal customer and they've been through the whole thing at least once. They've been through once um, and they're starting to come back and go through again. Is there, a, is there a resource or some kind of questions that I could ask them that would help me refine what I'm providing from their point of view so that I can make it more smooth and clear. And I mean, it's my job to systematize it, but I wouldn't want to do all that until I'd got feedback from them because there might be stuff that they notice that I don't see. Absolutely. What a brilliant question. Moira, you want to continue talking with your clients throughout the journey carriage. So the last carriage is once they're a client, you know, we do polls on our clients. We have discussions with our clients, but mm -hmm. me and Mike love a focus group. We love to take, you know, six or seven or eight of our clients and put them in a focus group and say, this is what we've done this year. This is the experience. How was your experience? What did it feel like? What worked for you? What doesn't work for you? And here's the jackpot question. What other experiences can I create for you that will make your life better? So many of the products we have today in the circle of excellence is actually created by our clients. Um, a platinum is one of them, you know, sitting in a house in, in the Gold Coast, like what Philip uh, Gouchard did on this call, where we sit in a room um, and we five, six people and we talk about business and life. And it's like a little bit of a big brother thing was suggested and recommended by our clients. Our titanium product, which is, you know, travel with Mike and Lundy anywhere in the world for four days and we work on your business and your mind and your life was suggested by our clients. So, um, you know, once people's been through one cycle with you, it, it would be a crying shame actually to let them go. I think many people go not because they was not happy with your service, mm -hmm. but because you don't have anything else for them. But we don't know about yes. it. We didn't ask them, you know, so you to be open to talk to them and say, look, what's your experience right now and what else do you want will give you amazing insight. So I've really got a little bit back. A lot of it, it's very one-on-one, -on -one, the work that I do. So a focus group might be good for the overall stuff, but a lot of the one-on -on work, they, they do trust me, the love is there, all of that happens and I can tell you all their secrets, but I write, but that's what <laughs> helps me support them. So something very specific gets modeled for, developed for each as we go along the train. So I'm thinking that I need to interview them more like individually because in a focus group, they they might be less likely to say anything that might disclose what I've helped them with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think if you interview them individually and then end your interview with I'm um, putting a focus group together, would you be able yeah. to share some of this in a focus group can be great because I think the combination of both will be good because you could have an individual interview of someone and have incredible, um, you know, intelligence coming from this. But, you know, my, I studied industrial psychology, Moira, and the reason I studied is, studied is, is because of how people behave in a group context. It's yes. fascinating. It's fascinating. I can sit now with you at a coffee shop and we can have our coffee and muffin and we can have the most incredible deep conversation and walk into a room and both our personas and archetypes change because of group dynamics. And that's of why course. me and Mike love having people in group dynamics. So if you can find a way to respectfully have those one-on-one -on -one conversations oh. and end it with, would you be willing to share some of your ideas in a group context and maybe only three out of 10 say yes, it's fascinating so so if, uh, after i watched mike's seminar the other week i thought this is what i'm going to do i got hold of a number of people and i said this is just a one-off opportunity to come and ask me anything so you don't pay just turn up 
I'll be here. Some other specialists will be here. And you can ask this question. Amazing things came out of a very, very small group. And then I thought, the stuff that came out of that, I could, um, it gave me a bit more clue of the kind of things that they were thinking about. But mostly what they're thinking about is how can they make me more successful so that I don't disappear off the market, which yeah. was very encouraging. So I thought, well, provide. yeah, so I re- so maybe the, one of the next things I need to do is get a focus group for people who are willing to speak to or do one-on-one interviews for feedback about their specific treatments and things, and then a yeah. focus group and and recruit a ring of steel from the focus group. Is that how you would do it? Well, I think, you know, it depends on your 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 goal. Are you looking for a support system? Are you looking for a group coaching? Are you looking for feedback from clients? I go to the focus group to harvest ideas. Me and Mike put focus groups together to harvest ideas, to say to people, you know what, you've been with us, you've had a one-on-one experience, what else would you like? And what people are saying to us over and over and over and over and over again, and we're working on it at the moment because it's not a short-term decision is, I want to hang out more with other Circle of Excellence members. So many times, you know, you get in that space where you have success and results for people, and then you mistakenly think that that's all they want is you Um, But me and Mike have now over the years observed how people behave at Bali schools and all those things. Many times they don't want us. They want the people that we get there and they get breakthrough experiences with the people that we seem to attract. So having these focus groups and uh, conversations, you might realize that not all of your clients, but for some of your clients, once they've had a one-on-one with you, they would be very willing to sit in an intimate, small community of people they trust that can give them things you can't give them. Yeah. And, yeah, and I'm just, you're not going to know this unless you ask them. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I'd like. So I'd like to just pull myself out now that I've got a rotating product that they come yeah. for and then treatments so that I just do this bit that only I can do and then yeah. I've got an assistant who will do that bit. But, yeah, um, yeah. it's like I'm starting the business right from the very beginning again, building the infrastructure which I didn't have before I just jumped in well it's not really starting from scratch it's now you're bringing all your knowledge all your wisdom all your know-how and you're basically plotting it out I mean you've you've earned your colors over years and years and years of helping people listening to people um getting outcomes for people you're just systemizing it more into something that can go on you know systemization sounds very boring as a word a word but systemization and legacy sit next to each other you know when you systemize something yeah. you're basically saying when i pig sorry to put it that bad you know yes. um, no, when i go on the ground all these my concepts and ideas and whatever continues to help other people it's that's what it is that's what systemization is yeah that's great that was a beautiful reef thank you yeah now i'm it's looking a- forward to pop out of this more thank you for sharing but ask your people <laughs> ask them what else they would want and they come up with the most amazing thing most of our circle of excellence continuously tell us they want to have more platforms to get to know each other. They want to have a more of a commune, more, you know, more getting, you know, Angela getting in contact with Andrea and Andrea getting in contact with Philippe and Philippe getting in contact with Bert and Moira getting in contact with um, Andrea and so forth and so forth. And so we actually at the moment looking at ways of how we can get the community that we've created to actually get to know each other better and to form deeper bonds and relationships and leverage, you know, this family. Because it's not a community, it's a family for us. We should say, mm. you're trusted worldwide family. Oh. Mommy and daddy, oh. brothers and sisters. Oh, can I give you a, a, a little bit of something that came out of the last thing that Mike did? And he, and he said, you can have this kind of business or this kind of business, small business, all this, or be a family business or whatever. And I, it had never occurred to me before, but it's probably so simple because I started off like individually, but really I want to work in a team, but I want to handpick the team yeah. because I want, um, and when I saw that, I thought, I realized what I really want, I want a family business. I worked in a family business as a kid oh. and it's not like my relatives 
but I want to have people who are like a soul family, that kind of family business. Um, and as soon as I had that, I thought, yes, that's how I make that transition. That's what we call it. Yeah. Because a lot of people say don't work with friends, but if they're not friends, I don't want to work with them. Well, Moira, you know better than to listen to other people. I'll even be shocked if you listen to me. You know, oh, we sure. actually, <laughs> you know, we're all individuals and we're all here to collect information, not yeah. Yeah. do what other people tell us to do. We're collecting the information and we filter it through our essence and values and we make it. And if you want a freaking yeah. family around you and you want to have soul group around you and you can all work yeah. together at the end of days and create value for people, it sounds amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anyway, I thought I'd invent that. Sounds sounds cool to me. It sounds like it lights me up more than anything else. So Exactly. Yeah. You want to do it alone. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Moira. I'm just looking at You're some welcome. of your chats here. Um, I see Chris greeting Philippe and Moira. I guess you were the early birds. Um, Philippe saying marketing sequence is super important. The carriages, I couldn't agree more. Sometimes, you know, genius lies in simplicity. It's not the complex stuff. It's the simple stuff. Just having a five steps and tracking those five steps. Um, opportunities such as this are invaluable, isn't it, Andrea? And uh, hopefully it's only starting. You know, there's so many more people you all have to meet. Um, Philippe likes his money train. Andrea, brand positioning is the key. How you want to perceive and received in the marketplace. Agree, 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 agree. And Andrea says we have money trade process in place as well. I didn't doubt we have one for one second. Uh, in come, I'm coming to South Africa, says Andrea, to reconnect with people. I met at Bali Business School. Honestly, Andrea, I think you can have a ball. I'm concerned you're not going to want to leave, I have to say. So if there's any South Africans on this call, uh, reach out to Andrea now. Give your personal details because she wants to see you all and she wants to meet you all. So um, please reach out to her. She's finalizing some dates based on dates we need to give her, but to start these relationships. I mean, I'm just quickly looking. Karen, Bert, Bert, you've met Andrea already, but Karen, uh, reach out. Adila as well. All reach out to a a Andrea. She wants to see you all. Um, mm -hmm. So, oh, Karen, connect with people too, with new people too. Karen, you want to step ahead of me. And Andrea already said yes. <laughs> you already connected. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You will, you will, um, You'll all get along just fine. And this is the type of stuff we want to see happening more and more. Now, I'm going to jump off this call. I hope I've planted some, some seeds. This is certainly not the whole module on Money Train. We're going to be sitting with each other and we're going to be delving deep into each of these carriages. And I'm really looking forward to this process. It's lovely for me to see you all. There's your heart. Angela, I've been enjoying the saxophones, that uh, split, snippets you've been sending to me. Very proud of you. And uh, I hope you all have a lovely morning and a lovely evening, and I'll see you soon. Here's your kisses.